Hello, my name is Katherine Drummond of Gingerbread Girl Designs, and this lesson is on how to make uh, a cupcake like this. I have currently um, two leaflets of cupcake designs. One is called Delicioso, and the other one is called Sweet Treats, and they have different uh, designs for the top, but the finishing is the same on uh, both of those leaflets. Before you start your finishing, you might want to gather all the materials that you need so that um, you can move right along uh, without having to go look for everything. So first of all, you're going to need um, some finished needlework, and I have this one here. Um, this one is currently unpublished, but um, we're gonna finish it into a cupcake today. Um, the stitching should be less than three inches across because we're using a three inch um, box for this. The other supplies that you're going to need are the circle template from your leaflet. Um, if you haven't got a leaflet, then, uh, well, I certainly encourage you to go out and buy Delicioso or Sweet Treats, but if you're going to make a cupcake with your own design or another small design, then what you want is um, an eight inch circle. And you can cut that out, either trace an eight, eight inch round plate, or you can use um, a compass from your geometry set. You'll also need some finishing fabric. I'm going to use this. Um, I like flannel for mine, but uh, quilting cotton would work just as well. Either one can be purchased at a fabric store or at a quilting shop, and there's lots of different colors and designs. I like to look for an all-over pattern, um, nothing too pictorial um, for the liner of my cupcake. And you'll need um, a strip at least eight inches wide to fit your circle template or um, you can always buy a fat quarter. You're also going to need some scissors, and I have two different pairs. I have this pair for cutting out my paper template, and I have this pair for cutting my fabric. Um, I was raised in a house where my mother uh, was a sewer, and it was always a rule that you never use your fabric scissors for uh, paper, so you wanna have the two different pairs if you want to keep your fabric scissors good for good for cutting fabric. You'll also need um, a three inch paper mache box and we're actually going to use just the bottom portion of the paper mache box. We don't need the top portion at all. Those can be bought at most craft stores and some um, department type stores as well. The next thing that you'll need is some pins, uh, quite a few of them, and I like these map pins which I got at a university bookstore uh, because they're short so they're not sticking out quite as far as the long sewing pins, but sewing pins work just as well and I also like the quilting T-shaped pins because they're easier to push with the big T-shaped head. You'll also need some paper clips. I like the plastic coated kind of paper clips for this application uh, and I just bought these at a dollar store. You'll also need some kind of stuffing. This is a, a polyester kind of stuffing um, that's going to go inside the, um, the cupcake. And a couple of finishing items. I have a piece of twisted cord that I made to go with this cupcake and that's going to finish off the top edge. Um, there's another video that tells you how to make this two color twisted cord so you can make one for yourself to match your cupcake. And I have some ribbon as well and this uh, I'm going to tie around the cupcake when I'm done. Um, and I like the organza ribbon just because it's a little bit pretty and girly. You'll also need a tapestry needle and some thread. Uh, sewing thread is great for this purpose. It needs to be quite strong and it doesn't really matter what the color is. And you also want some white glue. Any kind of white craft glue is going to be fine for this purpose. 
The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our paper scissors to cut out this circle template. So now we have our circle template all cut out and that's basically the pattern that we're going to use to cut out this needlework. Now it's got a very small design on it and you can see that it's in the middle of quite a large piece of fabric but you want your piece of fabric for your needlework to be 8 inches by 8 inches and the reason is that you want it to uh, be the same size as this circle template. Now we're going to use this template to cut out this design and also to cut out a circle the same size from our finishing fabric which is this flannel. So I've cut out my needlework in the circle and now I'm going to use this circle template to cut out um, the flannel and one of the nice things about this finishing technique is that you don't have to be super fussy about it. I'm just holding this paper down and cutting my circle around. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Because none of the edges of anything are going to show. So I find this finishing technique to be quite fun. Um, and I don't like a lot of finishing techniques, so hopefully you'll find it as fun as I do. Now you'll see that my fabric's a little wrinkled and you can press it if you want to, but I have found that it's really not necessary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over so that the wrong side is facing up, so the back side. And we're gonna put our box up right about in the middle of that circle. Now I'm gonna take my pins And I'm going to fold up one side of the box, or pardon me, the fabric around the box, and put a pin right there. Now I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to put a pin on the opposite side in the same way. Now I'm going to put a pin in in the same way, about halfway between those first two pins. And on the other side as well. So it is important that your fabric is, that your box is exactly centered in your fabric, but you want it to be pretty close. So now I have four pins in my box, right through the top edge, you can see, and it's like they're at north, east, south, and west. So I called them the compass point pins. So now what we're gonna do is in between two of the compass point pins, we're going to make little pleats. So we'll make a little pleat like that and put a pin in through the top so that it holds it in place. And I could take this one out now because we don't need that one anymore. And we're going to make another little pleat like this and put a pin in. And we're going to continue doing that until we reach the next compass point. And then we'll continue all the way around the rest of the box. So now I've pleated all the way around the box and you can see the pins go through the top edge there. If you get close to the end of your, um, your pleating and you find that you either have too much fabric left over or not enough fabric left over, you can take out the pins and start again. It doesn't take very long. And once you've done it a couple times, you'll get pretty good at it. So um, make sure that you like the way that the, uh, the pleats look before you go to the next step, because after this, it's a little harder to, uh, to fix a mistake. So now we're gonna take our glue 
and if you just gently fold out these pleats, we're going to use the glue to scribble inside on the walls of your paper mache box. And you don't have to be tidy about this either. But uh, you want to make sure that you get enough glue in there that, you, that it, the fabric will glue down for you pretty well. And right now you don't want to glue the bottom of the box, just the inside of the walls all the way around. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace these pins with paper clips. So I'm going to fold one pleat into the inside of the box and press it into the glue and then I'm going to take out that pin and replace it with a paper clip. And that holds this firmly in place. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the next one. And I'm going to keep going all the way around. Okay, so I've replaced all of my pins with paper clips. And now we can just set this aside to dry for a little bit. Um, and we will start the next part. And that is going to be with our uh, needlework. So you'll want to thread your tapestry needle with a, a length of sewing thread, double it, and knot the end. Now I like to take a little bite here and then go through the loop of thread to secure the end of the thread in my work. When working on this kind of fabric, it's pretty hard to tie a big enough knot so that it doesn't pull through. So this is the solution that I've come up with there. So now we're just going to baste around this circle. And you can use pretty big stitches for this. And just go all the way around. Okay, I've basted all the way around my circle, and you want to be about half an inch from the edge. It doesn't have to be exact, and you don't have to measure it, but about that much. Now we're going to pull on this basting thread so that this starts to form up into a ball. And you want to make sure that the good side of your needlework, the side with the pretty beads on it where the stitching looks really nice, is on the outside. And once you've got it so that it's almost closed, you can kind of hold the thread there and you want to start to stuff it with this polyfill stuffing. And you want to stuff it so that it's pretty full. Not super hard, but pretty nice and full. All right, I have filled up my cupcake with the stuffing. And if you want, you can hold this in place and push it into the cupcake liner to see if it's as full as you want it to be. And this is best done if your cupcake is really quite dry because you don't want to pull out the fabric. But I think that this is the right um, fullness for me. So I'm going to close up this basting. And this is why you want to have a really nice strong thread. You don't want to use embroidery floss for this because it's not really strong enough um, for the pulling that you'll do on it to close this up. So we're just going to make a regular sewing knot here. And then I think we'll do that at least one more time just to be safe because we don't want our cupcake to fall apart. And we can cut that thread off. And that's the, that's the inner part of our cupcake. So now we're going to assemble our cupcake. We have our cupcake base and we have the inside of our cupcake. And you want to take your glue again and scribble just inside 
the bottom at this point. All over the bottom, you want it to stick pretty well. It's not going to be under a lot of pressure, but you want it to be reasonably secure. So we'll just scribble all over the bottom there. And now we're going to push this cupcake into the base. And try to push it in evenly so that your design that you stitched is centered. And you can use the, if, you, if you're using my designs, you can use the beads to judge, or you can just use the very edges of your own design to judge. And that looks pretty good. And then you can straighten out these pleats in the inside part a little bit. You can play around with it a little bit until it looks the way you want it to. And there we go. So now it comes time for the cording. And what we'll do is we will take our glue again and we'll run a line of glue along the top edge of your fabric here. You want to try not to get it on your needlework fabric but if you get a little bit on there, it's not going to be a big deal. It dries clear. I will say that this is not a particularly conservationist method of finishing, so I wouldn't use it for anything that you want to last for a long, long time. Um, I have had my cupcakes for a few years now, and they still look perfectly good, but um, glue dries out. Um, in some climates it can attract bugs. So for something that you want to be an heirloom, this is not the way to go. But for something little and fun, it's a, it's a quick and easy way to finish. So now we're going to lay our cording along the top of the cupcake. Right in the glue push it down a little bit so that it's securely in that glue a little, a little bit too much there so we're just going to wipe that off and I like the ends to be um, these designs are four-way symmetrical so I like the ends to end up right at the point of one of the, the one of the sides. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle again, and I'm just going to use it to push the end of this cording down inside the box. And you want to work do this gently and kind of slowly because you don't want to yank the cord off the, from the rest of the box or anything. All right, just fix that up a little bit. And then uh, this side we're going to cross over and tuck in as well, but I'm going to cut a little bit off of the end here because that's a lot to push in. Whenever you cut cording, you want to make sure that you tie a knot, otherwise it'll start to come unraveled. So we're going to cross that over and push it down into the box. And you can just fluff out the cupcake a little bit to cover up that end there. And make sure that your cording is pushed into the glue all the way around, and then you can let that dry. And uh, if you're anything like me, then you have glue on your hands, and at this point you should probably go wash your hands. All right, as you can see, our cupcake is just about done. The very last thing 
is to tie a piece of ribbon around it just to make it a little bit prettier. And uh, this that I have is a 3 8 inch organza ribbon. That's the one that I like for this, but you of course can use any kind of ribbon that you like. Now I find myself that when I tie a bow, it looks the nicest upside down. So knowing that about me, I'm going to put my cupcake upside down in relation to myself. You can see that this is where we crossed over the cording at, and I consider that to be the back of the cupcake. So we're gonna put that at the bottom here and we're gonna tie our bow on the side opposite to that crossover. And I've cut 20 inches of organza ribbon. I find that that is the best amount for me. You might want to try a little bit longer than that just in case. Just in case you tie things a little differently. At least the first time and then you can judge how much you need. And you just want to straighten out your bow a little bit, even out the loops. And I'm going to take my scissors and even out these ends. And I like to cut them on a diagonal. I think it just looks a little bit nicer that way. And now we have a cupcake that's all done. Just as nice as the first one. I hope you enjoy making cupcakes as much as I do.